Okay, and that takes us to taxes. Now, this is my word, and I would use the word insane, uh, for a company of Pfizer's size to potentially go for a transaction in which it would be tax inverting in an election year um, without commenting on any exact transactions. You've been pretty vocal about the tax regime and the issue of cash being trapped <coughs> overseas. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your view on it um, now? How does Pfizer stay competitive if so many of your uh, brethren really have already inverted across uh, U.S. shores? Well, my view is that, that I, I believe this is a country of laws. I think the laws are, laws passed by Congress are clear, at least. Uh -huh. And I think I have a duty to, to move to increase or, or, or defend the value of the, of the, of the company for, my share, for, for the shareholders. And I also have a duty to our colleagues. I want them to have a company that's robust and that can grow and they can have careers in and to be developed in. And I feel we're at a tremendous disadvantage right now in that, in that, in that, in that race. I have uh, foreign companies who have tax rates of 15%, who can put, invest two to three billion more in research than we can. And we're fighting with one hand tied behind our back. Mm. And your comment to me, well, this is not the appropriate time. Tell me in the last 10 years when it was the appropriate time. And, and, and what, what level of confidence do you have that in the next 10 years we'll see rational tax reform in the I don't United have confidence States? in that. All I know is that <laughs> well, well, there you go. You've already <laughs> been through the process with your potential uh, Astra deal of too much political blowback on the issue. Well, that, no, I don't think so. I don't think there was any real political blowback. There was, no, there was no real political blowback in the United States and there was no political blowback in the UK. The UK government was quite willing to have us do that transaction. We just didn't have a willing seller. Right. Simple as that. And we didn't have a capital market system which would, uh, which would make for an efficient transaction. Are you ready for Pfizer's name to become an election stump talking point? I'm willing for, for Pfizer's name and myself to say that we are doing what we need to do to ensure that we can continue to innovate, continue to bring cures, to continue em employment, and to be a successful company. And the problem is, is our tax code is hugely dis disadvantageous to uh, American uh, high-tech multinational companies that I personally have been to Washington for the last two years. I have talked to almost anybody who would listen to me. I have tried to get this as an urgent issue that we need to fix, and I have been totally unsuccessful. And what do they, like, what's that conversation like? We all understand. They all understand. They all say, yes, we know the tax code needs to be fixed, yet there's no political will to fix it. And so that leaves you no choice, perhaps. That leaves me with an, with an assumption that, 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 that even when there may be political will, it's still going to be a very difficult process with no guarantee of a competitive outcome. Uh, European nations have, a, have a, a lot broader tax base. So they have, they have corporate tax, they have personal tax, and they have VAT. Right. This allows them to drive their corporate rate down to levels that the United States cannot. How much cash do you guys have overseas? It fluctuates, depends on, uh, on, on where the money is at any one time. It can range from between uh, 20 billion to 50 billion. Right, so that's a lot of money, right? So arguably, and this is a, an argument for inversions, you can, with your uh, lower tax rate, do more investment in the United States. Yeah, I mean, if you're a, if you're a, um, if you're a foreign company, um, the issue is, it's not that we don't, as a company, want to be in the United States. I think the United States is a fabulous place to do business. Uh, you have great schools, great intellectual property, rule of law most of the time. Um, you know, you, 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 but so does everybody else who invests in the United States. There's no competitive advantage between being domiciled in the US or domiciled outside of the US. In fact, there's a huge competitive disadvantage. Mm. If we make a dollar in Ireland 
and we would pay the Irish government 12 cents in tax. We have 88 cents left. If we bring it back to the United States, we have to then pay up a full US tax load on that. So in fact, we end up with 65 cents. Mm -hmm. If you're a European competitor or a non-US domicile company, you make a dollar in Ireland, you pay the tax there, and you can bring the 88 cents back to the UK, back to the US. Right. You can invest it in the US, you can deduct it at 38% in the US. Right. Why is the tax code making it better for foreign companies to invest in the United States than US companies? Well, a number of companies have voted with their feet. We've seen them one after the next. So uh, you guys are almost sort of behind the pack in that regard right now. Well, I've made that point that it's one of the elements we look at. Right. I'm not saying it's the only element. Sure. When you look at a deal, it's not just driven by, by tax philosophy. It's, look, tax is an expense. Let's just put it simple as that. It's an expense on the P&L. It needs to be managed like any other expense. As, but, but when you look at your, any deal you do, you look at what's the price of the company you're trying to acquire, what does their inline and future pipeline look like, what are the f operational synergies look like, and what are the financial synergies look like. And you look at that as a combination. So it's one element of the valuation. Okay. 